Once there was a man who realized his company had very inefficient product development processes. He went to his manager and asked for help. The manager was wise in the ways of business and recognized that they needed PLM. So she went to her boss and asked for some money to implement PLM. Her boss, who was not learned in the science of software, didn't understand why they needed PLM when they already had ERP. He was very confused indeed, but he knew there was a problem and he trusted his manager. So he sought counsel with a wise consultant who gave him sage advice and helped him see the way. ERP is fine for products defined, but to innovate, PLM is great. This sounded wise and more than a little clever, so he approved the budget and had some nice t-shirts made up. The man got his better processes, the manager got her improved performance, and the boss was able to take all the credit when the benefits rolled in. And hey, free t-shirts. Welcome to PLM 411, where we give you straight talk on how to improve and accelerate product innovation and product development. I'm Jim Brown with Tech Clarity. Today I'm joined by Brian Repke from Autodesk. Um, today we're going to talk about PLM, a different aspect. We're going to talk about PLM in the cloud. And um, Brian, I'm just going to jump right in. Autodesk took a very different approach to bringing PLM to the market than other companies did. Um, why cloud? Sure, great question. You know, for the longest time, we avoided getting into PLM. Uh, we had heard so many horror stories in terms of how long it took to deploy, the amount of customization needed, and really just the cost associated with it was just different than Autodesk would like to get into. But customers were coming to us finally, our customers, and saying, you know, we want you to get into this. We want to have an Autodesk solution for PLM. So, you know, about this time, you saw the emergence of a lot of um, new cloud players or kind of the mainstay cloud players becoming really uh, predominant. And we decided that that seemed like the best shift for us to capitalize on this platform shift into the cloud to really take advantage of that and deliver a PLM solution. Yeah. One of the things, I mean, you hear a lot about the cloud is cost, but um, I want to hold off on that for right now and, and actually talk about speed. I mean, one of the things this show is about is people understanding PLM and how to accelerate product innovation and product development. But, um, you know, one of the things about cloud is actually speed and being able to get a solution in very quickly, particularly for companies that uh, may not have IT resources to put on it, whether it's a smaller company that, you know, some don't even have IT resources or a larger company that maybe the IT resources are tied up on other projects like maintaining an ERP system. Um, talk, talk to me a little bit about getting the uh, getting cloud solutions in quickly. Yeah, so I think like you said, a, a lot of the savvy buyers or the people that we talk to, cost really isn't the right thing that they're looking for. A senior executive is never really that concerned about the cost of something. What they want to know is when, are they, when is it going to make an impact to their business. And really that's one of the biggest things that cloud has brought to, from our perspective, has really brought to our customers, is this kind of instantaneous way to get started into a value-added part of the cycle. We can get them basically the equivalent of deployed servers and software and infrastructure and all their users in a second. You know, in five minutes they're ready to go. So. By doing that, they get right into the part where they can start to change their business or adapt, you know, whatever process that they're working on into a cloud solution and get value much faster. Yeah. And you and I talked earlier, uh, actually last week, about, um, you know, if we were doing this interview a couple of years ago, probably the first thing we would have talked about was security, intellectual property. And, uh, you know, there's been a real shift uh, that I've seen in terms of uh, people starting to understand what I used to call a myth, you know, that, uh, that they actually had better security in-house, but um, you're not even hearing that question as much anymore. One of the fundamental shifts that we've seen so far is a lot of the customers we talk to have already invested in, in cloud applications, which is different than we saw before. So whether it's things like NetSuite for ERP, Salesforce for CRM, um, Google or Microsoft Office 365 for online office applications, it, they're they're much more educated about what to look for from a from a SaaS vendor and and they're experienced with it. So as opposed to just um, you hate to call it the fear of the unknown from before, now it's a it's a set of questions and a process they that they go through with cloud vendors to ensure that in our case Autodesk is doing the right things and if we can pass that criteria that they have you know it 
the IP question or that security question is really off the table at that point. Yeah, so it's m more of a mature buying process that they're going through and, and they can understand more what you would offer and, and what to look for. Um, let's talk a little bit about cost. I mean, you know, one of the things that I, I know I've talked about in my research is, you know, really there's lower cost across, you know, e even for the vendor that you can pass on, um, but also for the, for the individual customers, you know, taking something and moving it from a capital expenditure and buying hardware and, and moving it to, uh, you know, moving to something that's really an expense item. Uh, makes a pretty big difference. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really see it on two different vectors where cost is a factor. I, I talked about upfront and it's about the value and the initial purchase. It's the ongoing costs which usually end up um, sneaking up on you in a yeah. traditional solution. So it's what happens if I grow, if my company grows and I want to add more users or my supply chain grows, what does it take to expand the hardware and, and, and grow that infrastructure to support it if the data grows? In SaaS, you don't think about it. It's just automatic scaling. Um, the other thing is the upgrade process is really painful with on-premise uh, tools. It doesn't really matter what it is. Anytime you run your enterprise on something that you maintain and install locally, a lot of times what happens is you skip a version, you'll skip a release, and you get you know what they call rev-locked into a solution. And then that upgrade, that new software, new customizations, data migrations, can sometimes, and hardware, can sometimes be more expensive than the initial outlay of the software. And people don't realize that up front, but it's a common thing that you'll see over and over again in a traditional solution. Yeah, so, you know, it really sounds like cloud is uh, hitting both sides, you know, fast, fast to benefit, but also, uh, you know, also the cost side, so. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, Brian, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Jim.